Salmon and steelhead are fast disappearing from areas like the Selway River. But another of Idaho's ocean-going fish is in even deeper trouble, the sockeye salmon. Fewer and fewer return to their home in the Sawtooth Mountains each year. But this summer, 239 sockeye appeared along the shores of Redfish Lake. Phantom fish, sentinels, eyes. standing watch over a heritage Brothers about to be lost. Everybody's uh, been respecting it pretty well. He calls them ghost fish. They represent the spirits of millions of fish that for countless centuries made the incredible 900 mile journey to and from the ocean. It's a testimony to the sockeye's remarkable perseverance and a gesture nice, from an Idaho nice native who does fish. not want to see this legacy from his childhood disappear. I like that, but this is my favorite one right here. It just, the warp on it is just perfect. A rotted mouth, warped tail, moldy sides, the sculpture reflects the resilience of the sockeye salmon, fish that have endured the battering of a long, weary pilgrimage. I mean, I feel like my art is a form of communication. Uh, I'm just simply stating facts here that there used to be millions of salmon that swam the Columbia Basin, uh, and only one sockeye salmon returned to redfish in 1996. None came back in 97, and this is 1998. Don't see any yet, but we're waiting. Artist Greg Schlanger is a professor at Austin Peay State University in Tennessee. He believes that art can be used as a forum to create consensus on environmental matters. The idea for this project actually began in 1996 when Greg was invited to design an exhibition at a gallery in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, I'm originally from Idaho and Redfish Lake is probably one of my favorite spots in the world. And it got its name from the sockeye salmon that spawn returned to Redfish Lake every year. At one time, the Salmon River, which Redfish Lake empties into, would become almost red in color because of all From Arkansas, the, the exhibit went overseas to Germany in the summer of 1997. Now, it has come home, so to speak, in an even more striking form. One red sockeye stands out among the ghost fish representing the single salmon that returned to Redfish Lake in 1996. I really enjoy the quality of the, of the plywood and the grain coming back out and that kind of worn, aged, you know, what the salmon do once they get up this far. The 239 fish were cut out with a jigsaw, whitewashed, and then sanded down. The next step was to weld them to some sort of mounting structure. Greg wanted the sculpture to be at eye level, bigger than life more on a human scale, so people viewing the exhibit would connect with it. His idea is to promote awareness. What is the message we should take home? Mm, whatever one you choose, it's up to you. Um, but at least, at least I, I would hope that you're aware that Redfish Lake, its name, Redfish, got its name from the sockeye salmon that used to return and spawn here, it used to become red in color with so many. And uh, now there's a lot of mountain whitefish out there. Maybe we'll call it Whitefish Lake in the future. I don't know. So that's what we're going to do. We're gonna there's a this. gentleman in our theater Unless that is doing a Meet the Artist program. And he has done the watercolor display that we have here in the visitor center. And also the sockeye salmon display that's down near the shoreline of the lake. And he's doing a presentation in our theater right now. And his artwork is called Sockeye Waters, Sockeye Dreams. You're welcome to join him. Greg's watercolors complement his sculpture. They hang in the Forest Service Visitor Center and on the walls of Redfish Lodge. Ghost fish swim among bright spawning sockeye. Some of the works include depictions of Redfish Lake and stylized maps illustrating the incredible journey of the salmon to and from the ocean. I think for me and, and my sense of, of, of the salmon, but using the trout in my work before, is that is that I, I really feel a connection to the fish. And it's, the fish are, they're under the water, we don't see them. It's, it's real easy to ignore the fact. If they're there or not, if they're disappearing, if they're not healthy. Uh, but, I, and I think it's through the end of my fly rod that I connect the most with the trout. And it's the most incredible experience is to, is to have that connection. And, Greg has even bigger projects in the works. He's formed a nonprofit foundation called the Sockeye Arts, Education, and Science Fund. According to the mission statement, 
The idea is to support individuals and groups whose work promotes the communication of environmental ideas and biological diversity through the arts in collaboration with science. Hello. Uh, that's another dream of mine is to, to get this organization on its way and functioning on its own, but uh, an organization that will fund other artists and scientists and encourage collaboration between the two in working with different issues. But his ideas don't end there. Phase two of Sockeye Waters, Sockeye Dreams is projected to premiere in the year 2004. Well, the, the, the proposal is to create a 900 mile long sculpture from the ocean to Redfish Lake. Um, uh, come up the Columbia River, into Washington, hang a right on the Snake River, come into Idaho, hang a left on the salmon, and eventually come to Redfish Lake. The fish will be much larger, 10 to 20 feet long, so they can be viewed from across rivers. And Greg right. estimates he will need to build around 150,000. That's a good thing. Uh, yeah, that, so that I'm, I'm hoping really with this project to, to create national attention and awareness of what's going on here. I think it needs to become national. Uh, it's going to be federal decisions really like uh, as far as the fate of the salmon. And now, besides the sockeye, we're talking about the chinook and the steelhead and, and other fish. So. Just like here, the bigger sculpture will feature thousands of white ghost fish with one red one, the single fish that made it back in 1996. It's an incredibly ambitious project, but no more fantastic, in a sense, than a fish that swims 900 grueling miles upstream from the sea to find home. It's a, a lot of work to get to this point and uh, a, a big road ahead of me to 2004 to build a 900 mile long sculpture, but I'm, I'm determined. I, I can't shake this thing out of me until it happens. So.